Hey everybody. There, now I can see you. Alright, what we're going to do, we're going to get started on the start to finish on these knives. Uh, this is actually Friday afternoon. Got a bunch of stuff I need to do outside, but uh, rain is real, real close. It's sort of a drizzle, not quite a rain, just a mist. Just enough to aggravate you. So, we'll go ahead and get started on this. I'll show you the first step. We're going to select the steel that we're going to use for the different kind of knives. Alright, we'll turn the camera down here where you can see what we're going to make. Alright, this is the camp knife. Now, I made a bunch of these. A bunch of people like these. My buddy Master Sergeant Richards, he got the original, the first one of these I made, and he carries it, I think, almost every day, so. So, uh, Charlie, me and you are going to have these. This is what we're going to have. It's a good, everyday carry knife. The steel on this one, these saw blades, cut saw blade that Uncle Buck sent from Ohio. There'll be two of those. And I'm going to get another piece ready just in case something goes wrong with one of those. I don't, it shouldn't, but I always got to be ready for whatever happens. I forgot to mention my buddy Frank, Addy Girls Homestead. He wanted one, and this one is the Swamp Tromper. Very good bushcraft knife. When I find a design that I like and I'm going to keep making, I'll make a pattern out of these my little thin pieces of wood. And uh, that's how I get them pretty close to the same. Remember, they're all handmade, so nothing is identical. And steel for this one is going to be this big old saw blade here. Because the nature of this knife, to be able to chop with it and do all that, it needs to be thicker. So we've got some good heavy thick steel here. You can see a project already lined up on there, but that'll be for this one. And this one, y'all seen a bunch of these through Christmas. This will come out of a regular 12 inch saw blade. Now this one is for the guy will have an antler handle on it. So all of this won't be used. It just depends on the antler of how much of this. I'll cut this much out because it won't be any more than that. But I almost forgot to make this one. He asked me about it a couple weeks ago. so That'll be yours. This will be for Chuck. Chuck here that lives in town. Because there's another Chuck that's getting a J-Nail Skinner too. And I'm going to make a Creek Skinner. I think y'all have seen those. That's on. Um, this is for the pastor up in town. Now he made the handles for it himself, so when we get to that point, I'll, I'll show you all that just because the handles that he made are so unique. And it's going to come out of the same saw blade steel as the, uh, the big Skinner. So first things first, I'll show you how to mark them out. Let me make sure y'all are seeing this okay. There we go, that better. Now this video is probably going to be at least two parts. I'll get one, depends on how long it runs. Now what I'm going to do, Pattern on the steel. Get the outline. Okay. There's a rough outline. And I'll go ahead and do this one. And this is very good steel here. It's thin. Very hard. Very easy to keep sharp once you get done with it. Just perfect for a little everyday 
knife to cut thing, cut string and feed bags, rope, whittle it with and whittle with it, and all kinds of stuff, just whatever you do with a knife every day. You can even clean clean fish with it. You can do anything with it. The only thing is it's not a chopping knife like a bushcraft chopper is wouldn't be able to do much of that with it. Alright, there's that one ready. Now the focus is going to be more on this one, or these two, because they'll be the same. And the swamp tromper. But we're going to do them all, you'll see them all at the same time. So. Right, we'll put those aside. close to the edge as I can. That way I save all the material that I can. Next step, I'll get outside and get everything set up, get the grinder out, and I'll show you. What I'm going to do is take the grinder and cut them out. Nothing to it, right? This is the easy part. Alright, see you outside. Alright, we got this piece here. <coughs> Pardon me. And clamp down to the table. Now, I do all my cutting outside because my shop is small and there's lots of dust in there, lots of flammable stuff, so I like to do it out here. And I don't want to spark the land somewhere where it's sitting. Safety glasses, leather apron. Alright, this might get a little loud. Hope this grinder keeps working. I had trouble with the switch the other day. This is that newest one I bought. Yeah, who knows? We'll see.
like that. Just nibble it away. Nibble off of it and finish it up on the grinder. up on the bench grinder I mean not that one. Now we're gonna turn it around and don't reach down there and grab that. And you wind up with burnt fingers. Ask me how I know. I always want to make sure you clamp your materials down tight. See, we're gonna move over here to the side grinder. Or we're gonna try to we'll find some more to put the camera because that one that'll do. vibrate the table off. Hey, what? Hang on, I'll turn it. I'll turn you back on. All right, that's what that tripod's for, I guess. All right, got the blank. It's cooled down just a little bit. So I hope there's enough light. And all we're going to do is take the, knock off the slag because that's very, very sharp. And then get it ready to its last and final shape. <laughs>
see if you can see that. I'm grabbing a file right quick. All right, sorry about that. I keep most of my tools inside because they get damp and rust out here. There we go. Right there. See how hard that steel is? Watch your ears, hang on. profiled put some handles on it sharpen it up it's ready to go right wrong <laughs> the first part is the easiest part now we have to go to the annealing process we're going to anneal this I'm going to get them all cut though I'm going to show you this one and I'll show you the swamp trumper I'm going to cut it next but it'll be exactly like the same way. Cut it up the same way, cut it and grind it. I'll show you what it looks like when it gets done. And then the, after that, when I get them all cut, the next step will be the annealing process, which I'll have to build a fire in the forge. And that gets a little bit more complicated with the different kinds of steel for how long it's in there and all that, and I'll try to tell you all about that. Chances are that's going to be tomorrow's morning's project. Cause I don't like, I don't really want to build a fire this late in the day. So, I'll get these other ones cut, and we'll be back shortly. Now, just for example, I got one part of the, the swamp tromper cut out. I'm going to show you the difference it is in time-wise, cutting like, cutting these, that thin steel, is just cutting this big thick steel. Now, plasma cutter would be ideal. Uh, that's still, I consider still that handmade because you use your hands to do it. But uh, due to my defibrillator implant, my face maker, I can't be around welders, plasma cutters, anything like that. So uh, I have to stick to the old fashioned way. But I'm just, um, since the purpose of this is showing you how much time it takes to make these, I'm going to show you in real time just how long to cut this one section here out. All right, watch your ears, it'll get loud.
half. That's extremely hot. So I'll let it sit right here and cool. See our lines are still here. The lines are still here. And we'll do it on the bench grinder exactly like we did that one. See, it takes a little longer to do that thick steel. Now, before I cut out this uh, the Skinner, the Creek Skinner, and the J Null Skinner, oh, oh. <laughs> don't you love it when the tripod falls over? Sorry about that. I'm not going to edit that out. That's going to be real time, the way things happen. I do all these the same way. Now, the J Null Skinner. I'm not going to show you how to make those. I'm going to make this one for um, for Hillbilly Bear. I'm going to make his. And I'll show it to you when it's done. I'm not going to show you the process on that because that one has already been copied. I saw it the other night on the video. I'm going to say that's fine. You know, if somebody wants to make them, that's, that's up to them. They didn't call it a Jay Nell Skinner. But it's a new thing, a new channel. It looks exactly like it. And I know it was a copy, so that's fine. But I'm going to keep those sort of under wraps because they're um, they're very inexpensive, very popular. A lot of y'all like them. I like them. I got one too. So that'll be the, that'll be the only one that you won't see the whole process of handling and all that that goes on there. But I'll show you all the rest of them. Cool. And there we have it. These are cut. A rough ground and the annealing process is next which I'm that's gonna have to be tomorrow I've got some business to take care of I may have to leave here in a little while going up to town and if I do I don't I don't like to leave with a fire going and it's not just to fire and put them in there and take them out it's a little bit more complicated than that and I'll show you all about that tomorrow it just takes time this this is when the time consuming part really really takes over Plus, I'm tired. About wore out for today. And this will be part one. I'll go ahead and put it up uh, tonight. So y'all can see part one. And I'll do part two and maybe even part three tomorrow. Depends on if I get any interruptions or not. So, till tomorrow. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support. See you tomorrow.